The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's word of grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with his blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12, that there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The way that seems right, but its ultimate end is the way of death, is what we've discovered to be the devil's delusion. In other words, it is this gospel according to Satan. This gospel according to Satan, which promotes salvation and the blessed life, but it promotes it as a result of human effort. In other words, it, it promotes it as if salvation and living a life that is blessed is simply based upon our efforts as opposed to the true gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which provides both salvation and the blessed life, but it provides it as a gift, a gift of grace, something that we cannot earn, but we receive because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we've been over the last few weeks We've been looking at this gospel according to Satan because we've discovered that this gospel according to Satan, it literally fails man in three key areas. It distorts, it distracts, and it deceives. We discovered that it distorts the vision that we have of ourselves but more so, it's, it distorts the vision that we have of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, this gospel, according to Satan, will cause you to believe that you and I are better than we are. It literally denies the total depravity of man. It, it, it fails to challenge us to recognize that, that our lives are a mess apart from embracing a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, this gospel according to Satan, it distorts the vision that we have of ourselves, but it also distorts the vision that we have of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because this gospel according to Satan, it will cause Jesus to be viewed simply as our example to be followed and not as our Lord and our Savior. Now, I'm not saying by any means that the life of Jesus cannot be an example for each and every one of you. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus did not come to be our example, but Jesus came to be our Savior. For the Bible says, there is born to you this day, Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, in the city of David, a savior, not an example, a savior who is Christ the Lord. See, understand family, Jesus didn't live and die just to be our example, but he came, he sacrificed his life to be both our Lord and our savior. And when you are drowning, when you are going under the waters of life, when you are dealing with the challenges in this world and you are going under for the third time, you don't need an example. But what you need at that time is a savior. You need someone who will reach down, who will get in that water with you and bring you out, hallelujah, and cause you to be placed on dry ground. So this gospel according to Satan, 
It is so dangerous because it distorts, it distracts, and it literally deceives. When I say that it distracts, think about it for a moment. It distracts us with our personal works. That's what I mean. This gospel according to Satan, it, it, it literally distracts us with our, with our personal works. It allows us to celebrate our own personal works of righteousness while remaining so ignorant of the true righteousness of God that can only be received by faith. No, the Bible says it. The Bible says that those of us who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the gift of righteousness, those are the ones who will reign in this life in and through Christ Jesus. So this, this gospel, according to Satan, it, it distracts us with, with our personal works of righteousness. It distracts us with, with the good things that we do, and it causes us to remain ignorant of the fact that true righteousness can only be received as a gift from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, beginning at verse number one, and I'll read it in the New Living Translation. The Bible says, Dear brother and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. Verse two says, I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Now, 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 if, if the Bible says that God has a way of making people right with himself, that suggests that there's God's way, but then there's other ways. He says they refuse to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. That, 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 that's, that's the gospel according to Satan. They, they, they try to, to get right with God by doing good, by, by, by doing, by doing the, the right thing. And, and, and listen, listen, it is a wonderful thing for each and every one of us to do right and to live the best that we can. But we must understand that our right acts, our charitable deeds are not what makes us right in the eyes of God. Listen, Romans chapter 10, verse number four says, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. And as a result, here it is, all who believe in him, all who believe in Jesus are made right with God. You can do good works. You can do charitable deeds, but in the eyes of God, apart from Jesus, your good works, your charitable deeds, your works of righteousness, they all fall under the category of a filthy rag. But when you begin to put your trust when you begin to put your confidence in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Bible says, as a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. They are made right with our heavenly father. So hear me today, family. This gospel according to Satan, this is why it's so important for us to look at it in 3D, because it distorts. It distracts us with our own personal works of righteousness, but it also deceives. It deceives us concerning our eternal destiny. Think about it for a moment. This gospel, according to Satan, it is so dangerous because it deceives man into thinking that our eternal destiny is secure because of the good works perform in this life. How many good people are unfortunately on their way 
to eternal separation from God because their trust is in the good works that they have performed in this life. It does not matter how good we are. It doesn't matter how, how many good things we do. The fact of the matter is, this gospel according to Satan, it is deceptive. It has deceived many into thinking that we are in a good place with God because of the good works we've performed in this life. When the Bible clearly says, according to Matthew's gospel, chapter number seven and verse number 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In other words, he says that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must all do the will of the Father who is in heaven. What do you mean, do the will of the Father? What is the will of the Father concerning our eternal destiny? What is the will of the Father concerning our salvation, our salvific experience? I'll tell you what it is. The will of the Father is for us as individuals to believe to believe in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And according to Romans chapter number 10 and verse number four, as a result, all who believe in Jesus are made right with our God. Listen, there's only one true gospel. And according to Paul, it's the grace of Christ, which is the original gospel, the gospel of Christ. Yes, there is a different gospel out there, and it's the gospel according to Satan. My advice to you today is to make sure that you don't buy in to this gospel, which, which points to you and your works. No, but allow your eyes to stay focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, realizing that it's in him that we live, it is in him that we move, it is in him that we have our very being. And although you and I were both dead in our trespasses and sins, God allowed his son Jesus to come, not to make good people better, but to allow dead folk, like you and I, to live once again. For in him there is life, and not just life, but life more abundantly. Thanks again for sharing. Thanks again for listening. I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this has been your Moment of Grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homer worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, because of his awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by his tremendous love. Until next time, this has been your moment of grace. Thank you for sharing on today.